there is one thing I'm going to address that I haven't talked about yet. And uh, that is the continued awful representation of esports and competitive gaming in the mainstream. The boomers don't get it. The execs don't get it. Even though it's become, I would go so far as to say over the last six years, essentially a part of the fucking mainstream in and of itself. It's what zoomers do. There is no getting away from this fact. I was talking about this the other night because I interviewed OJ Borge, how I wasn't very optimistic about the future of Counter-Strike in the current landscape. And he said, well, he didn't share that view because in his opinion, it's one of the easiest esports to introduce somebody to. You know, you're a soldier, you get shot in the head, you die, you're out the game, right? And I get that. And my counterpoint to it was that mattered in 2015, maybe even in 2016, doesn't matter so much now that we've had another five, six years of sustained esports growth and viewership increases, plus natural cur curiosities being tweaked during the pandemic. We're, I think we're over the finish line now. The problem is, uh, as in the finish line to get to the mainstream, the problem is being in the mainstream is shit. And it brings with it a unique set of problems, none of which are related to growth and all of which are related to perception problems and uh, staying authentic and true to ourselves and not becoming a part of this homogenous US monoculture that is sweeping across Europe as well as obviously all the digital spaces in the world. With that in mind, Coca-Cola, a company you might have heard of, a very Oh, Richard, are you, you going to do this? A very good corporation. I mean, really good. Definitely not a corporation that has in any way been associated with, by way of a, for instance, denying people in India drinking water, you know, and then using the fact that they have a franchise system to sort of hide behind any corporate responsibility. There's a million reasons to dislike Coca-Cola. You can go and look up what was happening in the bottling plants in Colombia, I believe Bogota, if you want to go and look into that, and how anyone that tried to formalize the workers into trade unions were mysteriously killed. <laughs> and Coca-Cola were like, well, listen, we are but one office in Atlanta. We can't control it. Yeah, great. I love corporations, mate. But for now, Coca-Cola is in the big how-do-you-do-fellow-kids stage of its life. Uh, it's sponsored a lot of esports events. You know, they've sponsored LCS. Not with their premium Coca-Cola product, of course, which, which is just Coke. But with, uh, I believe it was Coke Zero, which uh, I don't know if anyone drinks that. I have to. I'm fat. But then again, I don't really like Coke. So, you know, well, not that kind. Um, and I'm too fat to do the other kind. I'll just, I'll just fucking pop immediately. But yeah, they basically made a product for fatties back in the grand era of, you know, you are making everyone a beast. I mean, they still are. Uh, you know, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that since I moved back to the UK, and I would say with no real sustained effort until the last few weeks, uh, I lost 18 pounds, like in a very short span of time, while still drinking heavily. It was just like, you know, there's something in the food out there. Everyone's, you know, I'd never even seen a population. I mean, like, Britain's not great. You know that. We're all hooked on our Greg's sausage rolls. But, you know, I'd never seen this level of, like, diabetes till I moved out to the States, you know, where it's just like everyone has a diabetic family member. <laughs> like, just, just everybody. But anyway, yeah. So, Coke obviously is one of the most easily identifiable products. I remember playing a version of Trivial Pursuit as a child in the 80s uh, on the spectrum, where the question uh, was, uh, what is the most recognizable object across every country in the world? I don't know how they arrived at this, but the answer to that trivia question, be it true or not, was a Coca-Cola bottle. You could show it to an Aborigine in Australia, and they go, oh, that's a Coca-Cola bottle. You can show it to someone in South America, maybe someone, you know, in the Kiowa tribe. That, yeah, it's a Coca-Cola bottle. You know, it, 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 it was so ubiquitous. And that was that was the answer to the question. So they're a pretty established brand, I would say. The one thing brands all want is obviously fresh blood. The corporate vampirism that goes on. Uh, they need fresh blood. They need young people to buy their products. They need young people to realize 
uh, that their products are the best because they are and buy them and so they're always looking to get in front of you guys well not us guys because we're all fucking boomers right but the uh i know i do know i have the occasional zoomer in the chat they're looking to get in front of you specifically is what they're looking to do and they do that by sponsoring whatever the new hotness is and you'll notice this is how cynical corporate brands are when the new hotness became social justice they all did a bunch of cringeworthy commercials didn't they remember the pepsi one I will give a flower to a police officer. Yeah, that's not tone deaf at all. That's that's going to fix everything. Hey, have a flower in your Pepsi. Yes, we're friends now. I love the next generation, said the pig. It, it was just fucking stupid. So, Coke went, you know what? Let's not do social justice for now. What else do kids like other than the sweet taste of social justice? Uh, Esports it is. So they made an advert, as, I, as we call them in the UK, or a commercial if you're from the US. And it might be one of the w uh, truly stupefyingly worst interpretations of esports I have ever seen committed to the screen. It's like, this is why. <laughs> if you want to be esports, just come and pay people from esports to do your shit. It never fails, right? This commercial is horrific. I'm amazed they've left it up, in fact. For those that are interested, uh, yeah, you can see the like to dislike uh, ratio. But yes, this is called One Coke Away From Each Other. One Coke Away From Each Other, it's called. Uh, because that's what we are if you think about it in life, right? If we could just put aside our differences and consume product everything would actually work out i think we could eradicate all of society's ills with product being you know the connective tissue of us, of us all together you know what i mean fucking corporations suck balls go on then When even Coca-Cola are sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, <laughs> like, <laughs> fair fucks, you've got some reach on you. What's happening? I could ask the same thing, yeah. <laughs> All right, is anyone, did anyone live through that? <laughs> is anyone, is anyone still alive? Is anyone out there? Or shall I just turn off the stream? I can't. I mean, there's, look, obviously I'm a media student, you know, so it's working on a, it's working on a different level for me, isn't it? Some would say a more sophisticated level, but I'm still trying to sort of piece it all together because I'm not sure what the implication is. Um, 
Like, I could get it, you see, if they done, like, a more traditional commercial approach, where, you know, you're playing your eSport, oh, no, my orc is weak, <laughs> you know, we've all said that, all of us that are engaged in eSports, we've all had a weak orc at some point in our lives, and, oh, no, my, my weak orc, what am I gonna do? And you have a bit of coke, and you go, oh, God, at, at least I'm energetic now. And with that energy from their sugary beverage, uh, I'll be able to make my orc, even though he is weak, you know, I'll hit my buttons better. And yeah, and that if the commercial had been the orc like charging up because you've had the coke and then the orc, it would still be shit, right? Is what I'm not saying that would be good, but it would sort of make thematic sense. If you drink coke, you can be good at esports and win. And then you could have that little love fest at the end, couldn't you? It could be like, oh, wow, yeah, you beat me fair and square. And the opponents could be having a coke afterwards at the end, laughing about it in the green room. You know, wow, you beat me on stage, wow. You know, like esports competitors do. That would have worked, sort of. It'd still be shit, and, we'd all, and I'd still be showing it to you and laughing at it, right? But it would be, it would be better. It would make a bit more sense. What I don't understand. The eSports Pro, their orc is weak and dying. And, and they look around and all they see are other weak and dying orcs and I'm guessing knights. Maybe humans, orcs and humans. They're always at it, aren't they? You've sort of signed up for that experience in eSports, haven't you? You've never... I've never had a pang of regret when I'm like, you know, I'm playing Dota or whatever. Oh, bloody hell, I've killed Windrunner. Nightmare, you know. She's got enough problems. She's ginger. Yeah, it's not, that's never happened to me. I, I, I don't think that's like a real sentiment. But then, okay, if you're in the middle of an esports competition, right, and the video game has made you big sad, because even though your orc is weak, you know, there's a knight that you're supposed to be beating, sort of crawling around on the floor, you know, holding his virtual guts in. And you decide to stop competing in the tournament. Well, you know, there's a second part to that commercial, right? And it's where a team owner, <laughs> a fat boomer, right, comes in. And goes, what the fuck have you done? You've cost me 20%. You're fired. And then that person goes home. And they go on Twitter. Ha ha, kill yourself. <laughs> From all of the fans that they've let down. All the people that placed bets on that game. Can't help but feel that was all missing. From the, uh, the landscape of the esports experience. That's just weird. But if you're gonna... If you want to say that... We shouldn't be competing in traditional forms of competition and uh, we should uh, respect each other more, right? And maybe the way we do competition in sports is bad. Uh, yeah, okay. So end the commercial when they're like holding up their arms. Well, yay, we, we, yo, we, you know, the end of Rocky IV. And if I can change, you can change. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. You know, you can do that. I love that. That was great in the 80s, right? End it there. But the next part is this esports competitor breaching their contract and ruining a whole tournament for everybody. The intimation is, and I think I'm reading the commercial correctly, is that they've stopped war. <laughs> they've ended all wars and achieved world peace. Now... I'm not a particularly optimistic um, human being. I think that's fair to say. But that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> that's a bit, a bit of a grandiose claim that that through the act of drinking cork and breaching contracts, we can somehow stop the Taliban or something. I don't. I don't I'm not really. I. I not really, I, I can't, that's the bit I guess I'm struggling with, that's the bit. I, I don't think I've ever seen a product lay claim that it will be responsible, directly responsible, for world peace before. I just don't think, 
I don't think I've ever seen a brand be that bold. <laughs> like, that is fucking crazy. That is a crazy thing. You know, I thought Pep Pepsi were way over the line with, um, hey, you know, maybe the police won't trunch in you half to death for a minor offence or peacefully protesting if you give them a Pepsi. You know, that was fucking ridiculous. Because they will. <laughs> but the... <laughs> The idea, if we all just drink Coke, right? Like, if we all just consume this brand, it's, it'll, yeah, it'll all end. All of the bad stuff. Globally, probably. It's worth a try. You know? I think that's an outrageously bold claim. And I like the way that they went for a hard, it's the Zoomers, you see. They've gone after you specifically. Because, obviously, they know somebody like me doesn't hold any belief there'll ever be world peace uh let alone through the medium of video games and coca-cola never occurred to me that that was a possibility <laughs> but they think you the zoomer with your love of the sweet sweet taste of social justice and esports uh, they think you can be convinced to believe that and give it a try which in retrospect uh, maybe they're right they do have very sophisticated marketing teams so maybe, you know, maybe all of those dislikes, maybe those dislikes are from disgruntled boomer streamers that are just a little bit jaded. You know, it's possible. Pretty terrible. I think we can all agree. Pretty terrible. But uh, not a surprise that the brands continue. <laughs>